All right. Happy March 10th to everybody. And um, we are now recording for the week of uh, beginning March 10th, daily positive thought of the day. Unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you got. I love that line. In other words, uh, you get out of life, either life, or your work, your investments, what you put into it. And that's the bottom line. And um, I think we all have to put a little bit effort in understanding what we're doing. And I think the uh, after visiting the folks in um, California, the trade station event was uh, fairly, very successful for, uh, I mean, a lot of people were, were there, got some uh, pretty good information. Um, and uh, I'm sure we had uh, Dave uh, Patterson came out to see me. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you uh, are, are listening, but um, in any event, um, a lot of people found some new information uh, from uh, what we were talking about. So it was, um, for me, it was kind of interesting that, and I just thought I'd share this with everyone in the room today, um, that I continue to poll audiences and ask them if they struggle with volume. And, and you know, for the, it, typically, you know, one out of 10 person will raise their hand and four or five other people have the same uh, response, but they're too shy. They don't want to. They don't want to be called on. They don't. You know, they're just shy. They don't. You know, people don't react to general public. You know, people afraid of heights, afraid of crowds, whatever. So generally, if one person raises their hand, I know there's probably four or five others that that are very similar. And then at this group, um, I would say I don't know, 20, 30 people raised their hands saying they had struggled with volume analysis, and I made them all stand up, not to embarrass them, but just to show that the other individuals that there's so many people out in the world that are being taught about volume and this has been a big message and you know people don't I don't know if they don't believe it or they just don't think it's that good but the the on balance volume indicator really is something um, that is very useful both as we use in this room as you know um, on day trading purposes as well as position trading so it has been very instrumental and people are out there still struggling with this volume histogram and I think the lack of volume on moves uh, reflecting in the histogram is based on either a dark pools with uh, firms um, trading within you know offsetting trades within their own uh, companies like Goldman Sachs etc and then the trades are reported later uh, but mostly I think a lot of uh, the the uh, volume is being masked by options and options trading so um, in any event, I think it's also important that uh, when I told everyone that the XLF, for example, and people were familiar thinking it was the, yeah, it's the financials, and most people assume that financials are all about uh, banks. And, and I, we explained that, no, um, the XLF is actually a diversified financial instrument. It reflects the valuation of a commodity exchange, which has nothing to do with commercial lending. We all know that. Look what M happened to MF Global. They couldn't even bail that out. Uh, so the CME, um, it also has um, American Express, a credit card company, and, and it has, uh, for God's sakes, uh, MetLife, uh, an insurer. So in any event, it's not a pure bank play, and that's where we look at the specific ETFs uh, that are geared toward those select industries and sectors. So in any event, I think it, it, what you put into your investment, if, you, if you're not sure, you've got to find out, you've got to do your due diligence, and you've got to break it down and do your own homework, and that's what we try to explain to everybody in this room. So with that said, um, overnight we had China retail sales out at 4.15 a.m., and then this afternoon we have this TD Ameritrade IMX index uh, out at 12.30 p.m. Other than that, we're pretty clear. Uh, you know, after the market closes, I think people will be looking at Urban Outfitters is coming out after earnings uh, for the week. These were uh, high closed dojis, and if we take a look at these names, you'll find out that I kind of filtered out. There were a few others, but I filtered these out to uh, stocks that generated high closed dojis in uh, seasonally strong sectors or stocks that begin a seasonally strong sector. So if you think about what we're coming into, March, we, we conclude the quarter in the month of March and um, we, we have that tide of change typically the weather changes and it is starting to get warm people were reportedly uh, walking down uh, Lakeshore Drive over the weekend it was what in the upper low 30s and people were wearing shorts and a short sleeve shirt um, in Chicago in the 30s and that means you know when you've been dealing with 40 below wind chill factor 30s is pretty warm um, game on for summertime volleyball players um, 
weekly low close doji. So this is interesting because we have uh, Exelon was a stock we actually got long. It's in the utility. DGX um, is more in the healthcare. Gilead Sciences is in the biotech. Um, PCNG, PEG, these are all weekly low close dojis. Notice that these are also utility stocks, and so they start a little downturn. Um, daily high close dojis. I want everyone to focus in on Devon Energies because Devon Energy, the energy complex, and look at all the weekly. Valero, you had Valero over here, Tesoro over there, Roper Industry. Um, we had um, uh, COP, ConocoPhillips, and um, for dis consumer discretionary, GM. A lot of people go out and start buying cars in the spring too, and you'll get a lot of um, um, big deals. Atwood Oceanics, another uh, stock that's in the energy sector. So notice we had a lot of weekly high close dojis in the energy sector, and that is a seasonally strong period of time. So in fact, here we have, um, we want to be continually watching for strength. This was uh, uh, just a re post from two weeks ago, strength in regional banks, insurers, casualties, and REITs. We saw uh, this week an amazing, or last week as a Friday scan, a lot of insurers, casualties, and, and real estate investment trusts, all types of REITs um, from residential, commercial, property management. It was amazing to see this, this whole sector come alive. And uh, I would say if we do get uh, any weakness in the regional bank sector, I will show you in my scans today that, I mean, it was something like out of 150 stocks, about 100 out of 150 stocks that generated weekly buy signals were regional banks. It was pretty crazy. It's like, wow, look at this chart. That looks, oh, it's a regional bank. I mean, how many regional banks can we buy? So that's why I say watch for entries, in, watch for weakness this week. If we get a pullback, you want to look at the KRE, all right? The KRE, and exactly if you take a look at, um, through the end of March, folks, through the end of March, these are the seasonally strong sectors, all right? Um, IYT, transportation, OIH, oil industry holders, XOP, oil and natural gas, dollar index. The dollar index in March typically gains traction, some strength. Now, that's very interesting because look at the euro. It enters a little seasonal time period of weakness in March. You know, we've been bullish the euro currency and we gave this indication that we could probably pop maybe 139, 140. We've been talking about that till we're kind of, I, I think we beat that horse to death every week. And, um, you know, looking at the commitment of traders report, we've seen that the small specs were short. Well, now, it, you know, it's interesting because if the specs get, if they get squeezed out of the market, and you have to start thinking dollar terms. If you're short from 135 and the market goes to 138, and that's a 300 point move. 300 point move, um, is $3,750 on a one lot in the euro currency. I think um, you know that's, that's probably getting up there to that threshold of pain that no one wants to hold on. Um, so between you know, $3,500 to $5,000 a contract, that's where it starts getting dicey and, and speculators start going on. You, know, you get the margin calls and you get the liquidation. And, and so that's where we watch for like a hyperbolic uh, um, exhaustion top, big tall range, like a benchmark. You, know, you look for high volume on a big blow off, a blow off top. That's what we're kind of looking for, that market condition in the euro. But uh, during the month of March, from, from the end of the first week to the middle of March, this is what happens. So this, these are some seasonally weak areas. Now, drug stocks as, recommend, as recognized excuse me, by the DRG. Um, also, biotech, BTK is the biotech index. IXTC, communications, telecoms, these three sectors are all weak in the month of March. And what do we have? We had Gilead Sciences, GILD, with a weekly low close doji. Uh, the bond market, now we talked about bonds. We tried to, we gave a great analysis for everyone looking at the knob spread and uh, said it, bonds typically gain strength the fir first week of March and then they fail. And they did miserably. They really adhered very nicely to the seasonal tendencies, um, which I, I hope everyone uh, you know attended and saw the presentation, especially the technique where we take the knob spread and take it down to either a 60-minute or the 240-minute chart and look for that trend line break. Now, last week we had our um, we had our mentoring session, and uh, I think it was a very successful week for. Uh, our students, and uh, then we got on a plane right away and went out to California and, and met the folks at uh, Trade Station. So 
um, I'm, I'm a little tuckered out to be truthful. Um, and then again, now I'm in Scottsdale. I'm seeing a group down here in Scottsdale, and then I'll be home tomorrow, sweet home Alabama, but it's actually Florida. So um, I did a lot of work yesterday in, in, um, in, in looking at the analysis, and uh, this is a very, I think this is going to be a neat sheet that's going to be able to be used for the rest of the week so, and for the next couple weeks. Typically gold and silver weekend. Now, the funny thing is that because they're in a weak sector, um, or at least a seasonally time frame of weakness, it doesn't mean that they're going to crash and burn, but if they break the last conditional change level, that's a different story. Um, cattle prices typically weaken. We've talked about that, and we had some nice setups last week. Coffee, sugar, bean oil, actually, and we were looking for uh, 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 last month, we were looking at that high closed doji to get long, and I said, look at weakness in the bean oil, and we gave the, the PIPA number, and it went through that a little bit, but we got to look at bean oil up in here because it did hit that resistance, a secondary resistance level, and uh, formed a kind of like what we call a high wave candle where it's not quite a doji. So watch for bean oil. It actually sees weakness. And this month, what causes weakness in, in some of the markets here is, remember, it's the end of the quarter, and we get a lot of reports that come out, um, especially in agricultural uh, we get planning intentions at the end of, and grain ending stocks. So the quarterly reports for hogs, pigs, we get a uh, cattle on feed uh, report for beef industry. So there's a lot of stuff coming out um, in, at, in the middle to the end of March. Okay, So pretty much our intermediate to swing trades, we're taking some heat on the Tesla credit call spreads for the March 220, 225s. I'm looking for weakness. Now these expire in March. We never did the weeklies. We explained why, because you don't have a fighting chance. We never added on because I didn't get, um, first off, the, the market peaked out. We got in these. I, I'd have to double check my statement, but I think it was a Monday I got in these, and we were going to look towards the end of the week. On Thursday, the market made a high, and before you could breathe, the market just, you know, cracked off the high. It never came back to really test those highs as I was looking for, so I'm just sitting with that small position, that one-third position I never added on to it. So I'm going to work on that this week on Tesla. Um, Tesla, if we see strength coming into Ford, if we see strength coming into GM, I think Tesla is kind of one that's you might see some of the attention focus from Tesla going into uh, some of the other names. So for Tesla, I think we still got a great chance to see um, the market get back down, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Also, you should be uh, a very light third position. We've been liquidating on the way up our uh, Sears SHLD call, so you should be in a small position of Sears. eBay, you should be in a small position of uh, the eBay. So here's what we chart review. The ES, if we break under 1843, it's going to trigger a last conditional change, um, and unless a new signal or a new setup is created, and then we'll update this every day. Bonds, they broke, so I don't know what else. The ZMB, they already broke. Uh, we can take that right off the list. Bean oil, this quarterly pip of 43.91. Uh, we want to talk about that today. Cattle, we want to talk about that today. Crude oil, it already hit its quarterly resistance. And gold, trigger below 13.30 is the LCC. And the, the euro, we're going to look at this if it goes up to about 140, 139.80, 139.70, something like that near 140, or if it breaks below 136.94, triggers the last conditional change candle. So, so that's the, uh, the analysis for the week and, and some of the high closed dojis and the sectors that are strong and weak. Now let's talk about the overall market. Um, the... The advanced decline on the S&Ps, now what the message is that we've been trying to share with everybody um, is then number one, we're going to possibly see some sector rotation. On a daily chart with Friday's action, by the way, everyone can see what I'm about ready to point to, Friday's daily chart generated a doji. And that's kind of spooky in its own right, okay? And so what I'm thinking here, to be honest with everybody, um, last week, the only resistance that I had up here was the fact that I was calling for over in this area when we were making this high against the resistance. Let me get rid of these pivots real quick. Everyone recalls um, when we had this high for the year and it, it, it went up, corrected. It went up, failed. That's once. It went up, failed twice. It went up, 
failed miserably three times. It went up, failed four times. It popped its head and it kind of popped right back down. And it was somewhere in here I said, listen, folks, if the market rallies, you've got to start thinking in terms of percentages. Where will the market be if it rallied 1%? Where will the market be if it rallies 2%? And we came up with a number between 86 and 88. And of course, Friday with the unemployment report, we saw a number 188750. It never even got to that 88 number, which is kind of you know bizarre, but that's okay. We're not looking for absolute numbers in area. And I think that the doji formation here and the lack of the volume participation kind of suggests to me that the market is going to see a stall here. Um, now, I think what we see the stall is for a sector rotation. The biotech sector, which enters a seasonally weak period of time, now that's kind of uh, interesting and intriguing because in the sense we got a little bit of a sell-off here in the NASDAQ. This NASDAQ looks a little top-heavy to me, number one. Number two, the volume analysis does show bearish divergence. There's no, no doubt about it. And if I change this to the cash market, we actually generated a, uh, and this is kind of, you guys, uh, we got to kind of look at both things. It wasn't quite a, a, a doji formation right here because, I mean, if you look at the open, it was 96 and the close was about 10 cents greater. Um, and if you take a look at the range, it was a narrow range, so it's not eight, less than 8 tenths percent, but it, it kind of resembles a narrow range day in the, in the queues, and then we, we all of a sudden, we close below these prior lows, as you can see here, um, and this high was 90.98, this close was 91.06. Oh, it is a mild, I guess you want to call it a, a last conditional change to a degree, but um, it really it defines the fact that the market generated a PPS sell signal. And when the queues generate PPS sell signals, and, and this is kind of something I wanted to point out to you, I think we got to, you know, every time we've gotten one, sometimes we've seen muted declines, like a one, two day, three day, you know, kind of underneath the moving averages, and sometimes we've seen you know, a weak decline, and sometimes it's just negated the very next day. You see what I'm sharing with you on this one? It gives a sell signal, and the very next day it pops and closes above the prior day's high. That's negating a sell signal. And, and so you've, you've seen some daily sell signals that haven't, at times, here's a small little sideways range, here's a sell signal, and it went right to support, and then zinged right back up. So we look at the history of the sell signals and say, are they meaningful? And I think one of the, the, the um, in, in this sell signal here, we actually, you know, was a low closed OG in the market, kind of didn't go anywhere and just ended up going uh, to the downside. Um, we saw that the advanced decline started to deteriorate, the volume started to deteriorate, and so we're starting to see that same kind of scenario where the advanced decline is deteriorating up in here, and the volume is certainly deteriorating here. So I think we need to respect the uh, NASDAQ sell off for a couple days. So if we're looking for sell signals, the NASDAQ, I'm warning everybody, the NASDAQ is the weakest link in the chain, so to speak. So Mark, from a market internal perspective, volume perspective, it's the one that's probably got the most to lose on a downdraft. Looking at the Russell, the Russell, this is the uh, cash market. So I want to look at the IWM with you real quickly. The IWM did generate a doji, but watch the fact that the low here was 1947. Uh, we'd never closed below that low in the doji. Um, volume's off. We have a little divergence with the on-balance volume, and uh, we never saw an acceleration in the on, um, advanced decline. So looking at the, the cash market, it didn't generate a, um, a sell signal. The futures did not generate that low closed OG either, but we've got to watch that for today. Uh, remember, if you're in the watching the cash market every day uh, and we form dojis, we got up to three days for a trigger to uh, materialize. So in this situation here, even the nice composite index, that was a doji, the market advanced. So um, we never saw as the market closed higher, the daily ad uh, advanced decline didn't uh, appreciate, so it showed that there was a stall in that rally, and looking at the on-balance volume, and we already have a line in the sand drawn, it never saw an, an acceleration. So this whole move up here, so since the time frame right here, folks, 
and you know we've been bullish this market and doing some pretty good uh, analysis and watching this market using these techniques. So I got to tell you, I'm 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 looking at this and I'm saying we hit a percentage objective with a two percent move. Um, the markets on different sectors are starting to show some cracks in the in the eggs, so to speak. And you know the old saying, tops take longer to form than bottoms. I think the sector rotation theme of mine is coming to fruition. We are seeing it. Uh, occur in the market. It's just going to be kind of tricky and we have to be watching this market because the market internals on a daily basis, the market internals even on a weekly basis on the, are showing that the NASDAQ's coming apart a little bit and that could be from the weakness in the um, the biotech sector and as you can tell the drug sector as well. So when we come into looking at some of these names and so for stock traders Uh, somehow I was playing with my charts and messed up something, so bear with me. Let them get in, a, in order for us. So that should be daily, this should be weekly, that should be monthly, and here we go. All right, so what did I wanted to show you was in, in taking a look at... Um, Weekly high closed dojis. Weekly high closed dojis was 151 symbols. So, um, you know, you take a look at some of these names. I just look at City Holding Company. I thought it was Chico, CH, but that's uh, City Holding Companies. Um, it formed a, a high closed doji. And here's the funny thing look at this weekly chart. It formed a high closed doji. I don't even know who these guys are. It's not on, I didn't even put them on my list because there's so many of them. Um, Look at look at high close doji um, weekly. I didn't even put the regional banks on my list on a lot of these because there's just so many names. There's just, it's bizarre. It's just so many names. But this is a uh, a weekly high close doji at quarterly pivot support. So um, another thing is take a, if you take a look at this, traders will be looking at this as well. It broke down below this little trend line. So we have a chance of seeing some of these names. Uh, on any kind of a pullback this week, you want to look at the stochastics. On a weekly basis, they're not overbought. Uh, the on-balance volume popped its head. So um, the, the it's just there's so many names. Uh, you know, it, it's tough. Bank of BK, Bank of New York Mellon is not a it's it's not a regional bank. It's an asset management, as we talked about. Um, we um, this is one of the holdings in 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 PA stock alerts and. I think that, you know, still look at the makeup, all right, whether it's assets, whether it's bank. Let's take a look at Bank America in here. So the banks are still strong. I mean, it's starting to come into a buy signal. People think that's overbought. It's coming into a buy signal. It, it, it came down into a trend line and, and supported and just took off. It never broke that last conditional change candle to the downside. See, that sell signal it was a low closed OG. And if the market's truly bearish, you look for breakdowns below a prior LCC candle for confirmation, and then you get a move to the downside. And it never happened, right? So all of a sudden, there's probably people that are short this stock, and they got, you know, last week got kind of beat up a little bit. This shows that there is a rotation out of something into the bank stocks. There's just too many bank stocks here um, that, that are just generating um, buy signals, as well as, look at this. This is a... a you know, I'm just clicking on stuff. Office REITs. So real estate investment trusts, out of all these names, it, it was just uh, amazing. On the low closed OG size, some technology names. Um, we had um, Baxter International, um, which, as you know, is a drug company. Um, so we have a lot of names that are in a seasonally, look at this, March 21st, it starts to peak out and then gets slammed. So a lot of the... Um, uh, I think, um, I don't know who this is, Biosept, it's another, uh, it's a new company, uh, we don't need to look at it, so um, this is the BRIC index, and I don't need to look at that right now, but uh, cross-country uh, healthcare, it just, it just confirms that we're starting, I mean, look at this. this, this company, actually from the beginning of March, it goes up, this is a company that's in healthcare services, it's not the same type of sector, it's not drug stocks. I'm looking for, you got to remember, we've got all these different sectors in healthcare. So, healthcare services is a different story, but I just want to kind of stay out of that whole.
whole healthcare thing until we get uh, a turnaround. Uh, as I mentioned with utilities, here's Exelon. You guys know we, we bought this off a, a, you know, back in, in uh, January based on a high close doji. You have a seasonal upturn, which we made money on. We got out of the thing. Look at the downturn in the seasonal trend of that stock. It goes down. And, and that's why you know, we did have a weekly low close doji. I would look for a breakdown below uh, this uh, 2960 area. If it breaks down below there, then you have confirmation. And you're also near, by the way, quarterly pivot resistance. I'm not looking to sell this stock because I don't think there's a lot in it. It might go from 2980 to maybe back down to 28 and a half a buck or so. I think there's some better areas that we can look for for uh, trades. But Gilead Sciences, I mean, when you want to define a name that has gone parabolic and the whole, um, the whole biotech sector has been parabolic for the last year and a half, and now people are recognizing that, hey, it's a great investment. Well, look at the seasonal trend. Uh, you know, it, it, if we, the seasonal trend is straight down with Gilead Sciences, and that's where I think you're seeing, you get a low close doji at a doji a couple weeks ago, yeah, it went a little bit higher. Um, the stochastics, as the market was going up, it was generating a uh, very, um, I would say, causing anguish amongst those that are short, because the stochastics was giving that bearish divergence. Now, this isn't a, a short term, that's a weekly stock, so I, I think you need uh, you probably go from very strong trends. You go to what do you go to? From trend to consolidation phase, and that's what I think. When that phrase is, tops take longer to form than bottoms. On a weekly chart, especially in Gilead, I just think that there's not uh, going to be a massive sell-off. I think you're going to see asset reallocation. People will take money off the table. In other words, you know, if I was long from 20, a thousand shares, I'll probably sell seven, six three, four, five, six hundred shares, cut my position in half and still have exposure to it and move a stop on break even, right? And that, that's going to cause that little selling and it might chop back and forth and back and forth. But I'll tell you what, there's no way I'm looking to get long in this market, but this could be a stock that's good for a credit call spread uh, scenario. Because remember, we go from aggressive moves to the upside to consolidation factors. And that's when a credit call spread comes in handy, especially when you're up and you start getting bearish signs like low close dojis near quarterly pivot resistance. So if you get a bounce this week, um, you know, and, and kind of come back and test the mean or the average high of Gilead Science, which probably is up here around 82 and change. So if the market does get you, you know, near 82 back and forth, I would, I would consider doing credit call spreads in, in this space, if not this stock, okay? So just, I just wanted to show you what's on this week's list and what sectors um, look good and what sectors don't. So let's take a look at uh, bean oil real quick. And I know the market just opened, but um, the bean oil market, you know, we were talking about looking at bean oil. Um, if you take a look at your sheets around that uh, 4390 area, and 4390 is this gold line right there. Well. We didn't just hit the gold line. We also went up to monthly pivot for the month of March. And look at Friday's action. It showed a little bit tiredness. And I would say based on this rally here, boy, that volume didn't bode well. So we start to see a seasonal trend from January. It goes up and it starts to stall. We start to see you know, a, a like consolidation. So what I'm thinking here in the market is, you know, this is kind of an aggressive move in bean oil, especially in the next week or so. If we start to get, um, you know, testing that high, I think, you know, day traders, swing traders, interday traders, you can start taking um, uh, with intraday sell signals up against this high, this 45. Look for some uh, setups on there. More importantly, if you do break below this last conditional change candle, which is, and that's a long way away from, from this high, it's like 200 points away, uh, $1,200 or so, because bean oil is six bucks a tick. So from 42 to 43 is $600, right? So from 42 to about 43 is about $600. I didn't do it exact, so, um, but you get the point, six bucks a tick. So it's not a high margin. It's uh, obviously if you it, it's it's fairly decent. And I know I'm switching to commodities uh, lately, especially with the uh, the live cattle setup. Um, you know, but we did get live cattle. I mean, again, 
if we um, if you break below this 40 this is the last conditional change candle here now and and so if we break underneath 140 that low and I just put it underneath a little bit just to give it some some breathing room. If you take a look at this low right here on a daily chart, this is our last conditional change candle, and it also generated a PPS buy signal. If you take a look at the low, it's 142.62 and a half. Then notice that we got a sell signal, but look what the low was. The low was 142.62 and a half. This day's last conditional change candle to the upside's low matched this last conditional change candle to the downsides low. So there's strong support there. So also take a look at this. Look at these old highs. So you've got old highs, a last conditional change candles low, and then the market's supporting. So you either sell it higher or sell it if it breaks that level. Now watch this. If we just took simple trend line analysis, and I drew a trend line here now, right? Take a look at this, folks. So you, you got more ingredients defining a bearish situation, right? So if we break a trend line, correct? That's an uptrend line drawn off of this low, that low extended out, the market's holding. But it's also holding against that day's low. So if you think about it, that's pretty bizarre, right? So this is the low of that candle right here, and it stopped dead on a dime. Even though we have a sell signal, if you want to get short, you either were looking as we were talking about intraday patterns up here, if the market got the 146 and a half, which you've had a couple times we've taken some sell signals up in here. Tops take longer to form than bottoms. Seasonal seasonal trend is to, to the downside in cattle. So the weather's starting to change. Winter storms are starting to dissipate. I tell you what, I think that um, you, you're going to be kind of uh, looking, you should be focusing in on this. If the trade has not gone away, it's still there. I think that the the absolute area of value now, if it's truly bearish, it shouldn't it shouldn't get back above these in this area up for a high, you know, somewhere in that zone, 44 and a half, let's call it, 144.75, something like that, somewhere in here, it should stall if it does have a one or two day pop, somewhere up in that that range up there in this value area. And then I'm going to just change that red for, for resistance. And then we're going to get into our day trade right right now. And then on the other side of the coin, man, if we break underneath that 142.20, you've got a whale of a correction because now you've just gone down and um, broken a longer term uptrend. Your market's confirmed it's broken support. Imagine if this velocity of this reversal candle, if, if the velocity from the market going all the way up here, all the way down there, that's a big reversal. If if that market stopped here dead on a dime, guess imagine what's going to happen if it continues. And I, you did see a breakdown. If you look at your uh, on balance volume, you did see a break. So the last time the market was down here was at that low right there, which is 141. And if you notice where the market was here on this day, we were trading at around 143. That's 200 points higher but the volume made a lower low. So that's saying there is inherent weakness in the market, and so don't lose sight of the short side of cattle if you're interested in trading that commodity. All right, so now let's move into our day trade, and um, I'm going to use my multiple time frame page first. Okay, so uh, China had some numbers out overnight, and uh, the market's sitting here, it, you know, kind of, we, we had this huge recovery from a 67 low, and all of a sudden, you know, China's numbers come out, and the market just popped. I'll be honest with you, I think the market here still has, based on the weakness, remember, S&Ps still has a lot of the drug stocks in it, the S&Ps have biotech still in it some of the bigger names. So you're going to have a weight of weakness of the NASDAQs going to affect the S&Ps. All right. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has, like, I don't think there's a single biotech name that I remember this early in the morning here 
after traveling off the top of my head, I don't think there's a biotech name in the Dow. So the Dow is not really going to be affected by a biotech sell-off, but there are some drug stocks in the, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, um, you know, that's not really going to be the factor. And with the energy sector gaining strength, the Dow with Exxon might hold up a little bit better. So if we do get sell signals, I think the NASDAQ is the sector that you look for triggers for the short side. You'll get more bang for your buck on the downside on any sell signals. And again, with the S&Ps, it'll also give you some, some decent trades. So with that said, the fact that today we, we are um, projecting a wider range day because we have a daily higher pivot uh, person's pivots generating a higher targeted high, but it also generated a mildly lower targeted low. So that gives you an idea that the market's actually kind of giving us already an inclination of a range-bound kind of market. Um, I'm not too thrilled with this type of pattern. It, to me, looks more like an intermediate. This is a 60-minute chart now, but it's giving me an intermediate term topping pattern right here. So notice that I just drew a little bit of a trend line. I mean, we, I think this, this, is the, this is a bona fide trend line. That low, that low, extended out, extended out, it broke. It came out, acted as resistance. It broke, and now it acted as resistance. So again, for, for the market here, we have this at 4.30 in the morning, this or 5 a.m. closing time period, this 60-minute chart right there, that last conditional change, that, that candle right there, and I gave this analysis the other day on Friday, if we break below that low, you probably can come down to this level, and it did. Um, I think for today, the, the key is we are seeing, look at the long shadows here. Look at the long shadows here. So I think what we need to respect is why is the market holding up at these levels? Why is the market holding up at these levels in here? And if we go over in time, and we'll find out, that this, this was the day Russia pulled out, remember? And uh, if you notice here, we're near that close, okay? We are near this old high, so we have a lot of old support. We're near that day's low, so we are near a lot of support in the market right now. So from a daily perspective, you'll also notice, what else is down there? Oh man, we've got the daily moving average. Look at the daily MA. So now you can see it, I highlighted it. So the key is, man, if we kind of break this, this low level in here, it might take a couple days, but boy, that doji right there from Friday, that's a very ominous doji. You want to make, you want to absolutely be very aware of this, I think, at the very least, up in here, from a trade perspective. And I would say we've got today, we got Tuesday, we got Wednesday. No big concernable reports, no big earnings coming out. You got the FOMC next week. Um, but boy, I think you know we've got uh, the Ides of March. Don't forget, we typically see weakness towards the end of the month for this market. Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not looking to take buy signals up here. Um, for stocks, I will look to buy stocks that are in a seasonally strong period of time, which we've uh, pointed out to you, on pullbacks. And I think that, that what we're going to see is a sector rotation and a short-term correction that might last towards, uh, from a timing element, I think from here, we've got a correction that might take us back right down into maybe not quite that level in the S&Ps, but I think it's going to be more like in here, like the 50, 55 area. It might be short-lived. So think of it this way. I think, and think of my, the theme. I think the market gives us maybe a couple more days of back and forth choppy, two-sided trades. I'm more interested in any retests of near the upper 80s, 82, 83, something like that. I want to be a seller up there. If the market does break down from this area, I'm not looking for a lot out of it. I think the market's really going to chop around and it's going to get choppy in here in the S&Ps. The downside action will be greater in the NASDAQ. And I'm not going to get ultimately bearish, okay? And I mean for a bigger wave lower until we break 
this trend line, which on a on a higher degree tent time frame, right? This is a daily chart. It almost looks like that 60 minute chart I just shared with you. If we need to break that trend line and this last conditional change candle, which by the way, um, this low right there is um, 4350. And now if you look on your sheet, you'll see where I, I've got the ES needs to break under 4350. It's that candle's low right there. So if we break underneath that level, and I don't know why, well, there it is. Okay, so if you break under this level in time, and I'm trying to move the chart over to give me more space to the right. Okay, so in time, if we draw out our trend line, and if you think about it, if we break this level, this 43 handle, we break in time. So one more day, two more day, three more days. You might get a low close doji. It could get a little sell signal up in here. But for me to get ultimately bearish, we need to break. A bearish move means back down to like maybe this area, like 1800, 1790. It's gonna take. It's gonna take a break of that trend line that last conditional change candle in order for me to get more bearish. Short term though, I think we chop around back and forth. All right, so I don't think we're gonna see an immediate crash to the downside. I think we go back and forth, back and forth, and it's gonna take, um, I don't know what it's gonna take to get the market down because we never see it, we never see it coming. But the technicals are showing to me, A, in summary, we are seeing sector rotation. We could see a mild decline immediately. Mild decline, I think you buy stocks in seasonally strong sector as we've identified for you today. Day trading the S&Ps, you probably get more bang for your buck selling NASDAQ on rallies and looking for daily sell signals in the NASDAQ, okay? So again, with the S&Ps uh, up here, you know, the 80 area, 83, 84 test of those areas, look for some last conditional change breakdowns on the short term uh, time frame. So in other words, the market rallies and it pauses, and if you get a last conditional change and a trend line break, so what am I def what am I defining by that? I'll show you. All right. So on the charts, is this a little uptrend line? It is, isn't it? Right. So there it is. That's that's a short term upturn trend line. Is this a last conditional change candle? It closed above that high. Yes, it is. So if you notice, if you take a look here you have a PPS sell signal that broke a little daily uptrend, okay? And it also, as you see, broke below a last conditional change candle. So it's defined a new kind of turnaround. It also is a little intermediate low close doji right there. You see it? So it has multiple bearish patterns involved. Broke a trend line, low close doji, PPS sell signal. And then what do you get? You got a little sell off. I didn't give you a lot, but again, remember this is a one minute chart. But still, if that same three um, occurrences show up on your day trading chart sometime later today, and we happen to be, you know, up in the 80s, right, 82, 83, 84, whatever, that's what I mean by A, if you break a last conditional change candle, B, you get an intraday PPS sell signal, and C, you break a trend line, then you got a sell signal, and you'll probably get that somewhere up in here. Does that make sense, everybody? That's the pattern. That's the setup. That's what we're going to look for. It's the. Uh, it's it's kind of like gives you a little bit more gumption uh, and more. Um, uh, I guess a confluence of confirmation techniques. Okay. So the um, BC, you're a new visitor here. Um, it's a pattern. Uh, something that uh, we we teach in our our trading triggers. I've written it about in in our books. And um, if you just hang back, we t typically um, just kind of deal with what we're we're talking in the room. But um, I think you'll get the the you'll you'll understand this later on. But so for um, for essence, um, for for those traders, um, 
and, and especially Dave Patterson, thanks a lot for coming out to see me out, and uh, thank you so much. It was great to put the, the name in the face, and I know, Dave, you're relatively new with us, so thank you all very much uh, for last week. For uh, We tried to, to, to juggle too many balls in the air, but I think it was... Uh, I think you guys got the right information and hopefully at the right time. Um, and again, the areas of interest that I'm uh, uh, looking for in doing business and what I'm looking to do in business. Now, here's another thought that I wanted to share with everybody. And I, you know, I, I, I see some of the news, um, and I'm just going to go. I know this is longer than we normally go with planning and scanning, but we have so many uh, things coming out this week. So. Um, I want to say thank you all very much, and I know this was a long uh, video, but there were some things to cover for the week, including sectors analysis, market day trade, setup patterns, etc. So um, we look forward to seeing everyone next week at Planning and Scanning. Thank you.